yeah, sorry about that, folks. Hello, everybody. So my name is Timothy Wong. So I work in the UK for an energy company. So um, yeah, slides coming up. So um, I work for British Gas. So uh, British Gas is an obviously an energy company, and we supply um, gas and power to a lot of customers, yeah? So both for residential and for um, business customers. So one of the services we provide to our customers is um, to fix their um, broken boilers, yeah? So um, this is what my presentation today is about. So um, um, for, for, for my company, we, we in different areas, we've, we've got different brand names, so in, in, in um, other areas, we might be called um, direct energy, for example, in North America. Um, in Ireland, we call it um, broad, broad gas. Yep, but in the UK, we call ourselves um, British Gas. Um, the next one, yep. So this one is what I'm going to talk about today. Yep. So uh, we are going to talk about how do we forecast the number of um, boiler breakdowns uh, required. But in the end, we re what we really want to forecast is not the number of boiler breakdowns, but um, how much resources do we need. Resources, I will be referring to um, number of engineers. But in more precisely, I'll be referring to uh, the number of hours required, number of work hours required. So it's, uh, it's clearly a very complicated problem because one, one job can be, can, one job needs to be, uh, um, um, fulfilled by multiple appointments going forward. So for example, one job can be fixed by an initial appointment, done, closed. But some other jobs can be more complicated. So the engineer needs to return to the property, fix it for the second time, job done, closed. Or if the job is not done, then you got the third appointment and so on and so on. But to, um, um, in this five minutes lightning talk, what I'm going to talk about is only the first part of this um, um, whole forecasting process, which is um, um, to model how much the, the demand would be, which is the demand is defined by the number of um, um, jobs. Yep. So that's what I'm going to talk about today. Yep. So, um, um, so we are talking about the number of, of gas boiler breakdown demand. Yep. So clearly, um, gas boiler breakdown demand is heavily co correlated with um, certain um, features. Yep. So for example, um, cold weather, when, when the weather is cold, then people obviously use more gas, and if they use it more, then it breaks more, right? So there's clearly some causality there. So we take those things into account, yep, so there's a process, there's a, there's a correlation there, yeah? So um, also there are other um, um, things that are correlated, for example, um, holiday or weekdays. So people, although the, the, the boiler can break down in, on any given day, people tend to attend to these things normally on our uh, working day, Monday, so we see um, a strong spikes on Monday, Tuesday, and so on, but a much lower um, um, demand over weekends because people don't tend to attend to these um, issues over the weekend because, for, for example, they're away. Yep. So um, 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 yeah, in, 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 this, in this forecasting process, we look at um, um, patch level forecast. So in the whole country, we've got um, 173 patches, and we model it at the patch level. Yep. So, um, um, the easiest one to start with is, of course, to start with a linear model, but that's clearly too boring, right? So, um, yep. So you can. So there are multiple ways to improve it. So um, a less boring way is to fit a polynomial model. Yep, that fits better clearly. Um, but clearly, a, po a polynomial model is still too boring. Well, we can do better. Yeah. So you can do a piecewise polynomial fit, but um, clearly that one's got knots and the and the and the and the regression lines between each um, uh, between each knot are not connected. Yep. So that one's clearly better fit, but that that's not perfect. Yep. So um, also what we know about is this this in this time we are not modeling a linear variable. We are modeling a, a Poisson distribution. Yeah, because we are looking at the number of um, breakdown demand. Yeah. So it's a number of things, right? That's uh, clearly a, a Related to Poisson distribution, so um, to, so we initially we use a Poisson GLM yep, to model this um, process and to test for a Poisson distribution, we use a, a chi-square goodness of fit test to make sure that it fits the expected um, um, Poisson distribution. Yep. So um, there's a package for it, and it's a uh, it's a very simple um, command for for a goodness of fit test. Yep. Yep. So um, um, given that we know about um, that the, the demand is related to certain um, features, linear features. So we can use um, generalized additive models to GAMS, GAMS to, um, to model that kind of relationship. Yeah, because that relationship can be 
linear, but sometimes it's nonlinear. So GAMS can capture um, nonlinear effects using uh, smoothing splines. Yep. So a smoothing spline is given by uh, a combination of multiple basis functions. Yep. And um, just like any other models, you can run a summary in R, and then you can read the regression plot. You can look at the intercept and the significant effects, uh, significant um, um, level, yep. and p-values, and so on and so on. Yep. Um, so um, we also compared um, GAM model and also GLM model. So the, there are two models here in, in the middle. Yep. So the first one is a GLM. The second one is a GAM, both using a Poisson distribution as the um, response variable. The only difference is that um, the GAM model has a smoothing spline. Yep. So we run both models, and clearly the second one got a much lower a AIC, which means that the model is um, simpler. Yep. And you can compare two models using, um, uh, using the uh, ANOVA function in R. So you, you compare two, two models, use the ANOVA, and, com and then you can compare whether the drop of um, um, residual is significant or not. Yep. And um, in this case, it is um, clearly better. Yep. So um, it's some simple, simple checks to compare different models. Yep. So um, um, in, our, in the model that we actually use, there are um, quite, a, quite a lot of variables. So it's just not one or two, but a lot more. Yep. So sometimes there are interaction effects. So in a, in a GAM model, you can use um, a TE. TE f so S for a single variable, but you can use TE for um, interaction effects. So on, on the, on the uh, chart on your right-hand side, on your right-hand side, yep. so you see you're seeing the effects of two variables. Inter actually, the interaction effect of two variables. So you, can, you see temperature and wind speed on two axes. Yep. So um, on the temperature axis, clearly, when temperature is colder, you've got higher demand, indicated by the red um, area on the, on the left-hand side. But also, even though when the temperature is cold, you get extra demand when wind speed is high, because even at the same cold temperature, when wind speed is high, then people feel colder, and then they use more gas, the, thing, the, the boiler breaks more often, therefore, therefore they create more demand. So, so here you are, you are visually um, um, inspecting the uh, interaction effect very clearly on, on this plot. And um, just like other, any other type of uh, um, regression models, you can summarize it um, in R and look at the, the uh, regression summary here quite easily. Yep. So um, um, this is some of our um, model output at the patch level. So we've got multiple patches of in, in across the whole country. Yes, this is just one patch. So for each patch, um, clearly here you are looking at around um, one month data, just one month. Yep. Um, so the, the red one, the red line in the middle and the gray area is the prediction and the confidence interval, and the blue one is the um, um, pre the blue one is the actual data, yeah. And this is in the in the testing set, so so this is not in the training set, yeah. So clearly, you can see you can you can see that the model already captures certain um, um, seasonality. So for example, the week the week effect, so you got seven day seasonality, and also sometimes there are um, spikes, yeah, spikes that are far outside um, the model's confidence interval. So there are things that are not predicted by the model, and we totally recognize that. Yeah, models are never perfect, and you got. Um, um, you, you, there are always um, circumstances that are not captured by the model. Yep. So um, um, as I said before, you've got, you've got multiple patches, and uh, there's quite a lot of them, and we can't visualize all of them. So, but this is um, part of the output. So we, um, when we build the model, we train the model on uh, around 70% of the data, yep, and we use the remaining 30% uh, as the testing set. So indicated by the blue and the uh, red um, box plots. Yeah, so um, boxes on the left-hand side, the blue ones, are the, are the um, um, accuracy of my um, training set. And the red boxes indicate the accuracies of my um, testing set. And on the y-axis of all these charts, you're looking at the uh, 1 minus percentage MAPE. So um, it's bound by 100. 100 is perfect prediction, and then 0 is nothing. Yeah, so so you're seeing that the, m the model's accuracy in the training set is cons quite consistent with the testing set. So that's clear clear clearly good news because the model can generalize to um, the testing set. Yep. And this is only London area. Yep. So um, here we are looking at the aggregated um, output for the whole country. So 
the whole country is 170 patches. So we add them all up and see whether we see any, any bias or any other strange patterns. And very fortunately, um, they are quite comparable when, when we, uh, after, when we, after when we add them up. Yep. So again, on the left-hand side, you've got training set and testing set, around 70 to 30% split. Yep. So um, blue is the fitted model. Red is the actual observed data, training set and testing set. Yep. So um, the, the upper one and lower one are two types of boiler breakdown, basically. So we've got multiple types of boiler breakdown defined defined by um, our business processes. Yeah. So um, on, the, on the testing set, um, the fit is actually quite OK. Yeah, it's actually quite OK. Um, although it's not really one full year data. Yeah. So the testing set got around two years data. The testing set got around 11 months data, excluding Christmas, um, because we, we ran this um, um, last year, just before Christmas, and we didn't capture the data at the time. Yeah. But um, um, even though we, we don't ex include Christmas, it looks um, Fine, the model. Yeah. Yeah. Okay. And um, this is again the how we how we look at the um, accuracy measurements um, at the national level. So again, it's defined by one minus um, percentage made, and the the, the accuracy is quite consistent both across um, training set and testing set. It's around 18, 80, 90 percent. So it's um, it's a valid model for 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 us. And um, um, yeah. So um, um, this is just um, uh, one little part of a very big project, and there are many, many ways to um, improve it. So for example, the most common way is, in fact, to we know, we know for a fact that the variables are nonlinear. So we can find ways to fe engineer the features, make them linear, and then apply linear model. So this is, in fact, a very common approach in, in the energy sector. Yeah. The other ways, the other ways would be to use um, um, backing, backing or um, bootstrap, bootstrap methods, or um, this is a time series problem. We can just use a time series approach. Yeah. Or there are many other ways like booster trees, random forest. Um, these are more more like machine learning models. They are less interpretable, um, but still interpretable. Um, but they are quite different from statistical model, as some of you might already know. Um, so those those are some of the potential improvements um, going forward. Yeah. And um, again, um, 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 my name is Timothy Wong, and um, thank you for um, being here today. Yep. Yeah. And um, um, thank you for everybody who built who built the packages, and also my project team here. Thank you. Big round of applause. Yeah. Thank you very much.